Hi, I'm Colin from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is a handover of an Auto Trailer Marla 734. So as we start the walk round on the driver's side of the vehicle first, the first point you get to is your mains connection point. So if you're on a site or you're at home and you're charging the batteries, you can hook the vehicle up. So this is how we get mains to 40 volt on board. Get your hooker bleed, lift the collar, slide the flap up and connect the vehicle first. Then connect the site and do it in reverse order when unhooking so that you're never walking around with a live lead. Underneath it, you've got this grey waste exit, which is your wastewater outlet. So normally on the way out of your site, you'd go over the, the grey waste dump point, open the lever and just allow the water out. And this is anything that you've drained off via a plug hole. So dishes water, hand basin water, shower water and anything else that you've drained off. In the winter you want to ensure that this is fully drained off so no water freezes and cracks any pipes or tanks. As that's part of your winterization process. You've got your two fridge vents. Behind the back wheel you've got a blue tap which is fresh water dump. So if you've taken on any contaminated water you drain it down for putting it in a storage for the winter when you want to make sure it's fully drained down or you're simply not using it for a couple of weeks you simply open the tap and allow the fresh water out of the vehicle LPG so liquid petroleum gas so all your lockers open with this habitation key so this is your gas locker and in here you can fit two six kilogram gas bottles this is our test bottle so what you do is you put the bottle that you have hooked up at the front and the spare at the back you put the strap around the bottle to strap the bottle in to make sure that it's secure when traveling and then what you do is to connect the pigtail it's a so the pigtails off here now it is a left hand thread to tighten the pigtail on the bottle so you push it on left hand to tighten right to loosen so opposite ways to normal with it being gas then what you would need to do is you need to nip it up with a spanner turn the gas on press the green button to allow it through the crash valve into the vehicle and then on the back of the regulator you've got this yellow pin you want to make sure that's always pushed in. If that ever pops out, you've just got to push it in because that's a crash valve on the regulator. And then turn the bolt off before you travel just to make sure that it's safe for other road users as well as you when on the road. Trim vent for the boiler when operating on gas. It allows the fumes out. Just make sure that's obstruction free. So the boiler on this vehicle is underneath the bed at the back. At the back of the vehicle you've got your high level brake light, your reversing camera and your bike rack. So to operate your bike rack, take the strap off it first. Pull the rack down, pop your bikes onto here, put these through the spokes and tie the wheel down to the rail. And then there's two handles, the small one being the first one, the large one being the last one. Pop them through your crush, your crossbars even. And then you can then put a bike lock around the bike frame and the bike carrier frame so that your bikes are safe when you leave the vehicle unattended. And then underneath you've got access to the storage space so again habitation key turn the lock will come out and do a full turn with the lock and in here you do have some storage you've got your carpets your on winding handle your step carpet in the back so if you want to store your um, chairs, your Kadak barbecue, other bits and pieces in the back you can. Then as we come on to the passenger side of the vehicle, you've 
got some more storage down this side. So again, carpets, hook up lead on and winding handle all down here. So access from the side and the back. Gas barbecue point, so external gas point. So this is where you connect your Kadak or external barbecue. There's a fitting on this zip tie here. Just cut that off, push that into there. You need to get some orange gas hosing and some Jubilee clips to connect it all together. And then you can use the bottle on board instead of carrying a spare bottle for your barbecue or Kadak by turning the gas supply on and off via the red tap. To fill the vehicle with water, you need to carry a hose pipe as it's mainly just a brass tap on site and some hose pipe fittings. You can either get the expandable ones that collapse dead small or a normal hose. You've got this little small key that locks the flap here and behind is your filling point. So you pop your hose into there, the flat end of the hose into here until it overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board which you can see on the main control panel. Cassette toilet, so operate the cassette toilet, so you open the locker door, you want to ensure that the mechanism is not engaged which I'll go on to when I'm inside the vehicle and then you can pull the cassette out, so if you can pull it out it's not engaged, if it's just not moving it's engaged, lift and slide it out got a handle so you can drag it to your waste disposal point which is normally beside your toilet block and then to empty remove the grey cap press the orange button just helps when pouring the content of the cassette out pour it out once you've tipped it out put some water back into here and give it a rinse tip out again and then you would go in with a cap full, which is 120 ml of your chemical, which is either green or blue, depending on what the site prefers you to use. If you're using the tablets, you put a pint of water in, or you put the cassette in completely dry, it's up to you. Push a pint of water in, then open the blade, which I'll show you inside the vehicle, and drop the tablet into the toilet, and that'll break down. It's in a cellophane format, but you don't need to take it out, it just degrades with the water. All in, we'll try to show you on collection. I'm going to bring it up to the motor home here. And then at the passenger door, you've got your diesel filler. So that opens with the main fade key. And then underneath, you've got add blue. So it's a 90 meter tank on a Ducato. When it needs add blue, the light will come on between the fuel gauge and temperature gauge. It's the top light. The other light means the DPF. So you've just got to give it, put in higher, higher revs in a lower gear and give it a blast to get that light off just your particle filter you add blue does does five and a half thousand mile at four thousand mile the light will come on as soon as the light comes on if you do top it up because if you don't top it up you can seize the pump and if you seize the pump it's then a new add blue tank and it's a very costly mistake to make so do make sure that as soon as the light comes on you then pulling off the road and looking for add blue which you can get in a drum so i don't know if you with this vehicle having a garage if you want to keep one in the back or you can buy it on the pumps like the wagons and it's about 150 a litre tire pressures are on here so five and a half bar which is 79.5 psi Underneath the seat, you do have your tool kit, which includes a jackner brace and a tornai in here. This just lifts out, this just pulls off. And then underneath the floor, underneath this cover here is where your engine battery lives as it's mounted in the floor. So if you've ever got to change it in the future, you need to take it out the floor or you want to put a charger on, just put your charger onto the battery itself. And then your bonnet releases on the dashboard. So we'll have a quick look underneath the bonnet. All your fluids are to the left hand side, so you've got your screen wash which is the main one you're going to need when touring, filling your screen wash up. This cover lifts off with the three tabs and you've got your power steering fluid and your coolant, followed by your brake fluid, your oil filler and dipstick, paint cords on the sticker, earth for giving or receiving a jump start, black clip onto here, 
between the air filter and the headlight there's this little square box here key in the side or should I say rectangular box lift it up earths, and that is the positive terminal that it exposes here so you put your red clip onto there for giving or receiving a jump start followed by your weight plate which is here so three and a half ton gross vehicle weight 4750 train weight if you were to put a tow bar on you can't go over that front and back axle weights inside the vehicle above the habitation door you've got your 12 volt control panel so starting with the button and the top left hand corner which is your master switch which turns the vehicle on either 12 volt if you're not hooked up or if you are hooked up you'll get mains 230 volt so you'll be able to use mains appliance and then underneath you've got the master switch for your lights which are all then individually switched around the vehicle and below that you've got the pump so you put your pump on to pressurize the water for the taps toilet and shower should you have enough water on board which i'll show you how to check and the top right you've got the awning light which is the light on the outside of the motorhome and then here you can scroll through the different settings so it tells you your sergeant ec363 control panel click again it tells you that your leisure battery reading and it's charging so that means you are hooked up take the hook about to get a true reading of the batteries your vehicle battery and then your water so it's saying fresh 50% weighs zero so you've checked your water you can now turn your pump on and pressurize the taps toilet and shower because if you don't have the pump on you'll just get whatever's left in the lines and it will just fade away to operate the true cp control panel which is your heating and wa hot water so you press and hold the long press to turn off and a long hold to turn back on and then just click it once and you can go into the menu so in the top left hand corner you've got a picture of a motorhome with a thermometer in this is how hot you want the inside of the motorhome to be so if you click on you can go all the way to 30 degrees being the highest or all the way down to off if you don't want it on but once you're happy with the temperature you would just press enter and that's preset that to 30 degrees of heat for the inside of the motorhome Next you've got a thermometer in water, so this is your hot water. So making sure you've got enough water on board and that the boiler is closed, which you'd only open that in the winter. You've got eco, which is 40 degrees of heating your water. Hot, which is 60 degrees of heating your water. And boost, which will turn off the heating and prioritize the water first. So for this, we'll just say hot, 60 degrees, and you would press enter and save that. And then next, you've got your energy source. So you can have it on gas if you were wild camping, as you wouldn't have any other source to heat the vehicle or the water off. You've got mix one, which is one kilowatt of electric, which is 750 watts and gas. You've got mix two, which is two kilowatts of electric, which is 1500 watts and gas. You'd use this more in the winter if you're in desperate need to heat the vehicle or heat the water. Both sources together reduces the time it takes to heat each source. And then you've got EL1, which is 750 watts of electric and EL2 which is 1500 watts of electric. So depending on the amperage the site gives you, whether it's 12 or 16 amp, will determine whether you use EL1 or EL2, but on most sites throughout the UK, you can use EL2. It may just be on the smaller sites abroad, you've got to use EL1. But if you are tripping the electric out on the vehicle or the site, it might be because you're overloaded, so just turn it down. So if it is on EL2, turn it down to EL1 if you run a mains kettle or a large output appliance fan speeds we've got on eco high or boost so eco takes a smaller feed of 12 volt and is a lot quieter if you want to sleep with the heating on high obviously it circulates the heat on a bigger fan speed and then boost it'll use all the fan speed max it out and boost 
the air circulation around the van. In the bottom corner you've got a timer so you can time the heating to come on and off just the once. Clock for the main display panel time when the times change. And then the spanner. So should you get a warning triangle in the middle here you can go to the spanner and you can go to reset. It will come a preset, press again and it will restart the control panel so you'll have to go in and set the temperature, the water, the energy source and the fan speed all again. In the kitchen area you've got three gas burners and one electric hot plate on mains electric. So making sure that you're hooked up that will work and then your gas will work wherever you are so if you are planning on doing wild camping your gas will still work. There you are, you've got three lit gas rings. Allow these to cool, the same with the hot plate, which is this one here, before you put the cooker hood down, otherwise you could shatter the glass if it's too warm. And then below, you've got the grill. And below the grill, you do have your oven there. Pushing the panel underneath the oven, you've got a little bit of storage, but this is where your winterized drain down valve is for your boiler. So your boiler holds 10 litres of water, and it'll be in here. But you need to drain it off so that the water doesn't freeze in the boiler because if it does freeze you can't replace it, you can't repair them, you do have to replace them and they are very costly. So drain it off because otherwise it does void your warranties as well and to drain it off you just lift it up, stand it up on end during the time that you've got the vehicle not in use especially over the winter come in with no pump or no power and lift that up open your fresh and your waste outside and drain off your fresh and your waste tank so no water freezes in the tanks below the chassis and then open all the taps inside the motorhome in the middle position of the mixer so that any water that's in any pipelines behind any furniture can dribble out the tap down the waste and straight out beneath the motorhome and then when you come to reuse it you want to shut the tap like so shut the fresh and the waste outside shut all the taps inside then fill the vehicle via a hose pipe via the fresh water intake on the outside of the vehicle come in put the control panel on put the pump on go to the cold side of the tap first you'll get an automatic automatic pressure of cold water because it's drawn it from the cold water tank underneath via the pump straight at the tap and then when you come to go to the hot side it'll cough splutter and all it's doing is it's transferring the water from the tank underneath the van into the boiler behind here before it goes to the tap that you're priming the water through on give it three to five minutes to pull the water through once you've got a pressurized flow of water a free flow of water the tap and the system is then primed you would try all the others and then your system's primed for the season but do make sure you drain it off because if not you are in for a expensive repair bill in the kitchen you've got a fold down worktop socket tower so it pushes down lift it up here lift this up pull it up turn it on three sockets but always remember to turn it off before you put it down back into the worktop and press this button so that you can push it down got two drawers there cutlery drawer being this one and then in here you've got storage four grey gas taps 
So what these are for is you can isolate each individual appliance if one is to be leaking gas or having a problem with gas. But what we see is just turn the bottle off to be safe. These are mainly for when the vehicle is annually habitation serviced in standards with the NCC National Caravan Council gas standards. Pushing the catches underneath the lockers and that's all lockers around the vehicle. You can open your kitchen cabinet. So you've got one storage for your bits and pieces, one for your plates, so this is a plate rack, the plug for the microwave which is an 800 watt mains power microwave so if you've got any problems you can unplug it, you can remove it, you can replace it should you need to in the near future and then to operate the Dometic fridge with freezer box you turn it on and off here so just press and hold that's the fridge completely off you can turn it on and then you've got three sources so that's where you can get the three-way fridge from so you've got mains 230 volt it'll act as a household fridge so if you're on a site you wouldn't want to waste your gas you'd want to use their electric because that's what you've paid for or if you are at home pre-chilling you can pop it on to mains power you've got gas If you were on wild camping and didn't have any other source available, you'd have to chill your shopping off gas and keep it fresh. Obviously, you hear it click in the background, it does self ignite. But if you haven't had any gas on the vehicle for a while or it's been turned off for a while, always prime it through the hob first because it might flash like it did there because obviously the line hasn't got any gas in until you then press the reset button and it brings the gas through so gas if you're wild camping 230 volt if you are on a site or you are pre-chilling at home um, if you're pre-chilling hook the vehicle up a couple of days beforehand and um, it'll allow the vehicle to be charged the batteries put the fridge on the night before put your shopping in leave that to chill overnight when you come out of the van the next morning before you unhook it Start the engine, pop it onto the battery setting, which is this one here, which it gets a feed from the engine alternator. And it keeps the shop nice and fresh when you're traveling until you go onto a site and either go back onto electric or your wild camp and you turn onto gas. So that's just for when traveling, your leisure battery isn't capable of keeping the fridge down to temperature because it hasn't got enough capacity in there to run a fridge. It just runs everything else. Fridge is too strong. And then this is obviously your temperature. Five being the coldest. When you're pre-chilling, have it on full. When you put your shopping in, just drop it down. Otherwise, it can sometimes freeze the fridge. And then when you are finished with it, if you give it a clean out with some antibacterial sprays and wipes, and especially in the winter, you want to leave the door open. But good it's good practice to leave the door open when not using it because you wouldn't want the smells to form in the fridge and then make your motorhome smell but you can go on the side of the light there's this little tab push it in these two toggles push out and it keeps the door open so air circulation is able to go in and out of the fridge freezer when you are storing the vehicle to make your front lounge into a bed all you need to do is Using the backrests, pop them in the middle to create your infill cushions. And then you would slide, so lift it up, slide the leg down so there's a folding leg on both. And then this would just slide away. So slide the legs in. Your leisure batteries underneath this one with the main 20 amp battery fuse at the top but you do have storage on top of there and then this side you've just got storage in there so there's nothing really in there you can store all your bedding and other bits and pieces in there for this bed 
or if you're not going to use it you can put other bits and pieces in there you've got your EC176 power supply unit here so system shut down button the black one so that will turn off all 12 volt in the vehicle so if you are standing it it'll turn off everything but if you do go out for a drive in it and you wonder why your head unit's not working your radio it's because this is off and it does go through here as well same as your reversing camera you've got all your 12 volt power fuses which are listed what they do so do carry some spare normal size not the micro blade fuses which you can get from local car factors halford zero car parts online and you've got your trips so your rcd your main trip so if you're thinking you're not getting power try tripping your vehicle out if your vehicle doesn't trip then it's not your end it's the end either the site or your house main trip and then yeah mcb so you can put them up as well if you've tripped the vehicle out solar panel that's fitted to the vehicle is just either to the leisure or the vehicle battery so you can choose which battery you want it to go to on this little switch here and then you've got a stack on all auto trail you get a standard build number so this is different on each vehicle but if you caught yours to the dealer you want parts from they'll be able to put in the auto trail system and find the parts that you are requiring at the back of the vehicle you've got two single beds with a wardrobe in the middle so in the wardrobe you do have your freestanding table makeup boards for the bed and your TV aerial so this is your Vision Plus TV booster and because it's a fixed aerial you can amplify the signal so you can bring it from max to min and you just look at this green light if that green light was to go red or amber amber means you need to then boost the signal same with red and green indicates that you've got a good enough signal and then you can pop your tellies on and they should tune in so this is an added telly that the customer has added in the back they don't come standard from the factory with a telly in the back but what you'll need to do is you'll need to retune your telly each time so if you go to the settings which is this one here then go down to all settings and press enter go down to programs program tuning and settings the top one you want to press enter And you want to do an auto tune on antenna because you haven't got satellite and you're not a cable digital only and it'll start to do a auto search and it'll find as many channels as it will it'll jump up and you'll think it's not finding channels until it slows down like it has there and then these will start to shoot up to say that you've found a good enough TV reception and you have a tuning telly tuning the telly in to the channels that the local area can find. So there you go, it's starting to pick up there. And it'll start to find the channels. It's a little master switch here in the bottom corner, so if you've knocked it and you wonder why you can't get your telly on. Obviously that will bring on the red light, which then you would point the remote down to here and it will come on blue once the telly is switched on. You can use those makeup boards in the back wardrobe to make a double bed across the width of the vehicle. So they'd rest on this rail on both sides and then it spread them so that they bear the weight. And then all you need to do is pop these cushions. So there's one at the top of that one. get the cushions that 
pop them there, bring this one down like so, and you've got a double bed across the width of the motorhome. In the washroom, you've got a separate toilet to a separate shower. So you've got a hanging reel for your wet towels, but it also doubles up as a great second wardrobe if you're going on a longer trip and you're using the site's facilities. So you can hang your clothing in there when you travel. Make sure the turnbuckles on your shower screen so that it doesn't clatter about when driving. And then when winter rising, so when I was talking about the boiler underneath the oven, you want to drain that off, leave the taps open, unscrew your shower head from your hose and lie the hose in the shower tray as you can see there any water could potentially coil up in there and potentially freeze so if you leave the tap open with the hose in the tray any water can drain straight out the waste trap your light for the washroom is just under here large toilet cabinet sink and an operated toilet press the blue button at the back which is this one here which is your fresh water flush the 12 volt assisted fan will kick in when it's flashing it's on press it until it goes to a solid light and you can press and hold put some water in the cassette put some water in the toilet first which lubricates the seal between the cassette and the toilet and then what you want to open the blade so if the blades open the cassette won't come out the outside of the van so open it when using it which is this grey handle here slide it towards you which is to the right use the toilet flush after use and then slide it back to the left to close it once it's closed it will come out the side of the motorhome if it wasn't closed the mechanism is still engaged and it will not move it gets three lights on here once the cassette is full which indicates that it's time to take the cassette out empty it rinse it out replenish with chemical and pop it back into the vehicle and then you'll only get one light on which means you can use the toilet on board to tune the front fold down TV which comes as part of the media pack on a auto trail vehicle. Obviously it comes down so locks away like so when travelling or when not new. So turn here, there's a lever at the back you need to just pull out which is this pin here. Drops the telly down and then to retune, simpler than the other one. AQT, big orange button, press and hold. Okay, and then it's doing an auto search and it'll find as many channels as it can where you are parked up. So now in the cab, to the right is your handbrake. And then on the doors you've got electric driver and passenger windows followed by mirror adjustment or so electronic mirror adjustment and you've got two mirrors on each side the top one being your main mirror and the bottom being the blind spot and you can adjust them all from here by selecting the mirror you want on the doors passenger and driver you've got Remus car blind so if you pinch and slide down you can black the doors out and then on the windscreen pinch and slide in the middle and and that would black out the whole cab on an evening when you're sighted up you've got your headlight adjustment and your rear fog lights wiper stalk with the trip computer on the end which goes through your average and instant consumption your range your traveling times your distance traveled and so on and then to reset it you just press and hold the trip button in and it'll reset the trips to zero and you can start again lights and indicators steering wheel controls that'll scroll through your contacts your tracks your audio 
and then on the bottom stalk you've got cruise and speed limiter so off in the middle top one's cruise it says cruise control on and the green light comes at the bottom of the rev count you get your, your speed push it up to set push it up to speed up pull it down to slow down cancel it with a foot brake cancel it on the end of the stalk resume it on the end of the stalk to the last speed that it was set at or you've got speed limiter so it'll say under there you can see it says 20 mile an hour if I push it up slowly it'll go up in ones if I push and hold it it goes up in fives and it'll say off to turn it on you just press the resume button and you'll see off disappears and it's now on so if you're going through a average speed camera zone you can turn it on turn it off once you're out of it to get up the speed and then you can change it to cruise control should you wish six speed manual gearbox lift the collar up into reverse which will bring on the rear view camera through the accent head unit you've got ASR off which is anti-slip relief so it's basically turning your traction control off if you were stuck on wet grass or wet gravel or you needed that extra you were struggling for traction you can turn it off hazards locks the doors including the habitation door as that is central locking you've got heated mirrors and then you do have a 12 volt for charging and a 12 volt cigarette lighter and USB cup holders on the left outside ring is the temperature of your cab and then on the inside you've got the fan speed it must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work which is this button here and then you've got the distribution so face feet or screen and whether you're bringing fresh air in or you're recirculating air within the motorhome. To operate your XSENT head unit, so you turn it on by pressing and holding the middle button here. Making sure that you always turn it off when you leave the van because it doesn't go off on ignition because it is also wired to your leisure battery and you can use it when you're sighted as well. So make sure you turn it off so you don't get a flat battery. You've got a home, so you've got navigation. Shows you a map of where the vehicle is currently situated. Press the three lines in the bottom right and you want to hit new route. You want to put address and you want to put the postcode or town in the middle bar here once you've popped it in it'll say go to town it'll show you an overview give you an overview of how many miles it's going to take you and how long and you want to just press select as destination then set as destination and it will start the navigation to that address i've got an fm tuner should you not be able to get dab but we'll just show you the dab one because that's what you're going to mainly use dab Press P1 to P6, which are presets to save your favourite radio stations. And you can just scroll through here, stations. So once you find them, you can press and save the favourite stations. You've got a camera. So you can drive along with the head unit showing the rear view camera at all times if you want. You've got a USB in the glove box, which will be your USB iPod or you can connect wirelessly via Bluetooth by pressing Bluetooth you want to find accent on your phone so if you go into your settings on your phone if you go into your Bluetooth at the bottom here you want to be looking for this this is looking for you And it'll come up accent hands free there you are accent 
you want to press pair you want to then enter this pin here so it's four zeros which will pair then it'll ask you if you want to allow your contacts to be saved just press allow it'll download your phone book and then you'll be able to hit these buttons and find your contacts or you can hit here and you can play your music via your phone you put your equaliser for your sound your settings and your little sat nav cords in the top there to pull this up you just pull it up from the back don't be too soft with it just give it a pull pull it up you pop your phone in there push the lever in to lock the jaws they are locked in nothing's going to move there or you've got a paper clip on the top 